Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and two years ago I was on the Dragon's Den. I appeared before the Dragon's Den panel pushing Brantford Bucks, a 10% royalty on your investment. And uh, when I finally saw the show they did, it was like 15 minutes of tape and 3 minutes of post-game interview, when I finally saw the hatchet job they did, in January of last year, I sued them for breach of contract, for not showing the right pitch, and for defamation, for distorting what happened. And I've lost both cases so far. We're into the Ontario Court of Appeal. But now you're going to get to watch the hatchet job, and then you're going to get to watch the whole taping 18 minutes to decide for yourself whether or not this was a fair representation of what went on. Okay, so first, we are going to watch the Dragon's Den episode that people saw on TV. And then we're going to take a look at the whole 15 minutes to see what the truth was. But let's start with the hatchet job first. Then there was John Turnell. And how could she not spell my name right? It's John Turmel, not John Turnell. Paying for $100,000 for his ambitious plan to completely overhaul the Canadian banking system. And it wasn't my plan to overhaul the Canadian banking system because I had to ask for $100,000 for some kind of a deal that would make them a profit. So this was to ask for $100,000 for which I would give them Brantford bucks, $110,000 for spending in the Brantford area. So the deal was a 10% premium on their $100,000. But that's not how they put it. This is government chips that don't inflate, and these are government chips that do inflate. Well, what's going on? Okay, so that's half of one of my arguments. These are poker chips that do not inflate. They always retain their value from a government casino. So here are government chips that don't inflate. And here are government chips that do inflate. What's going on? I was going to give the answer. But they didn't bother putting in the answer. We got a hundred going on. John's complicated plan involves replacing our currency with poker chips to fight inflation. Inflation, if you got a hundred chips chasing ten watches, economics teaches inflation is an increase in the money chasing the watches. But Okay, so there's another one of my arguments for which they only presented the first half. I pointed out that if inflation is an increase in the money chasing the watches. What's the other alternative? This is all they teach in economics. Economics teaches that inflation is an increase in the money chasing the collateral. That's all I said. Economics teaches inflation is an increase in the money chasing the collateral. But he lost Arlene during the economics tutorial. Arlene took business at school where they taught that inflation is an increase in the money chasing the goods. So, so why should Arlene be lost when I say increasing the money supply causes inflation? That's what she's been taught at school. John, I gotta stop you. What the hell are you talking about? So I guess she forgot that they teach in economics that inflation is an increase in the money supply chasing the goods. She doesn't know what's going on. What am I talking about? I just said economics teaches inflation is an increase in the money. She's confused. And I look like I'm pretty stunned she's confused over that. And unfortunately, he already lost Jim at hello. Yeah, poor Jim. He couldn't keep up with anything. This idea you got is like blowing air up a dead horse's ass. And he has a lot of experience preparing horse at Boston Pizza. <laughs> it's not going to work. I'll give you a hundred grand if you burst into flames. This guy, this is all he has on his mind, bursting into flames. He just found out about spontaneous combustion. Gee, what kind of an oldster is he not to know about spontaneous combustion? Ah, they all want me to burst into flames. They're all in. <laughs> Who was laughing for real? I'm out. You're done. Goodbye. So that was the one-minute hatchet job. 
They use two quotes from me saying, hey, how come these chips don't inflate and these chips do? What's going on? And they didn't put in the answer. And then they said, they had me saying, economics teaches inflation is an increase in the money, but they didn't have me explain the other possible alternative. They cut it. Now we go to the whole show. Hello Dragons, my name is John the Engineer Termel. Now I'm going to mention why the producers put that reader right at the top there with the time marker right over our faces. Well, that's up to you to guess why they would have done that. They could have put it down at the bottom, off on the side, but they decided to put it right over all our faces. So. And I'm going to be talking about the time bank concept. I'm from Brantford, Ontario, and I founded the Abolitionist Party, and I want $100,000 to set up a time bank branch, Brantford dollars, in Brantford, Ontario. Also, of course, you can invest in these all over Canada, but I want one for my town. Now, what do I get for my 100 grand? 10% on your money up, to, up front. That's it? It's a royalty street? That's it. So, Robert Hervichek got it right away. This is about a 10% royalty on your buy-in. You, it's like if you buy Facebook credits or Google credits. If you buy a hundred bucks worth, they'll give you a hundred and ten dollars worth of their credits. They want your cash up front, they'll give you their poker chips, their chips, and in the meantime, they bank the cash, they get the interest. That's the game for the system, making the interest, and also it's keeping the sales, in my case, Brantford Bucks, local to the stores who participate. So, the pitch is made, the pitch is caught, and if they had played just that 30 seconds, then I would have had no suit for breach of contract against the CBC because they didn't play the actual deal that I was making the dragons of the 10% uh, premium on money. Not, not a word was in the original minute on the premium on money. Now, a little bit about me. I, this is the, if everybody remembers it, the Millennium Assembly in 2000, all the world leaders, the Millennium Assembly of discussing the world's problems, Jean Chrétien, Clinton, all the big ones there. And on the inside you can see again there's Clinton and the Saudi prince and John Turnell. What was I doing there? Protesting. Actually, I was, <laughs> actually it's close. I was giving the speech on banking. I had been invited to the United Nations as a, an NGO and they had invited me to do the speech on banking and they passed resolution C6 for a time-based currency to restructure the global financial architecture. Well, a few minutes to explain how I got there. What am I doing at the UN, walking around with a white hard hat on, you know, in front of all these major politicians? Now, I've been told I should have skipped this story, which ended up alienating them because they're all financial people, and I should have just stuck with the 10%. Could be right. Well, back in the early 1970s, I was taking my engineering degree at Carleton University, and in the last year they started with the Mathematics of Gambling course, and I took it. And I started making so much money gambling that the professor said, you've got to be an idiot to go work as an engineer, six bucks an hour then, when you're making 15 an hour playing poker. Be the teaching assistant in my Mathematics of Gambling course, and go jump into Vegas, play blackjack. So I did. I was one of those original card counters beating Vegas in the early days before they knew about us and as teaching assistant in the mathematics gambling course. But I started getting barred. So I said, why can't I play blackjack in Canada? It's like poker, game of skill now, now that we know how to play well. So I came back, started running games off, and they ended up calling me Ottawa's Gambling Crusader because I kept trying to legalize games and they bust me. And I ran the biggest gaming house ever busted in Quebec. And I ran the biggest gaming house ever busted in Canada, 28 table underground casino. And I made a million dollars. But then I had to spend a million dollars before they seized it as proceeds of crime. Well, it's not easy to spend a million dollars. I mean, gone so they can't seize it. So I financed barter systems around the world. I financed the creation of the Abolitionist Party of Canada, ran more candidates than the Greens, ran for prime minister, lost. 
Then in 2000, I get invited to the United Nations because of an NGO. God, you've had a hell of a ride. Oh, it ain't even, you're not even halfway there yet. Keep going, so, don't stop. And all it's the past. Anyway, at the United Nations, I got in because I was, I ran for Prime Minister. And as I'm going to go to the Millennium Assembly, I get an invite because one of the clerks of the committees for globalization had belonged to what was called a LET system. Now, LETS, what happened? Well, back in 1979, I ran for Parliament during the Joe Clark election to legalize gambling. I got tired of being busted. And I kept, then the people started asking me, and they said, hey, what are you going to do about inflation? And I said, whoa, how come my casino chips don't inflate, and the government's chips do? What's going on here? The hardware's identical. Inflation must be a software problem. Okay. Now, most people find that very entertainingly enlightening to find out that how come this hardware suffers inflation and this hardware does not suffer inflation it must be that inflation is a software problem if the hardwares are the same which means that we can ro reprogram a fix of inflation most people go wow but they cut that line out that inflation must be a software problem they cut out the interesting conclusion to make my statement a half statement that meant nothing. How they go in and out. Now these are Branford casino chips. This is government chips that don't inflate, and these are government chips that do inflate. Well, what's going on? I did an engineering analysis, and I came up with what they've dubbed the Termel Miracle Equation. If you Google for it, you'll get it, and here's how it works. Ten guys put up their watches collateral. They all borrowed ten chips. They all promised to pay back eleven. 10% interest. Now, they never printed the 11th chip. So there's 100 chips on the table, total debt 110. Well, what ratio will survive? 100 out of 110. What ratio will get knocked out of their mortgage? Mort meaning death and gage meaning gamble in French. The remainder, 10 out of 110, gets squeezed out of their death gamble into foreclosure. Now, economics teaches that inflation, if you've got 100 chips chasing 10 watches, Economics teaches inflation is an increase in the money chasing the watches. I'm the discovery of shift B. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I gotta stop the John. Did you hear that? I'm the discoverer of shift B inflation, a decrease in the watches. So, you have shift A inflation that economics teaches more money chasing the watches, but I'm the discoverer of a seized watch causing inflation with the same amount of money, no increase. Now, she really wasn't surprised about the statement that economics teaches inflation is an increase in the money. She was really surprised about finding out that I'm teaching inflation is a decrease in the watches. That's what she was really surprised about. I gotta stop you. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about setting up an interest-free banking system so you can own a bank and make money. What? And one guy gets foreclosed? That's it? Pardon? And one guy gets foreclosed? No, no, I'm saying use an interest-free system. I'm explaining the problem okay, with today's world. Let's make it simple. Where do you I, I, I want to buy a million dollar house. house. I, I come to the bank of, uh... John. Punch your house at my casino. No, no, I come to your... Uh, look, I need a million dollars. Come to my casino. I need a million dollars, million million dollars yeah. cash to buy the house. They're not buying... I can't use chips. I Why? Have cash. Because the guy selling it wants cash. How so we can't do the deal. If the guy would rather sit there and not sell his house because he doesn't want chips that our community uses, well then keep your house. He wants government chips only. Our own chips based on our work don't count. Well, of course, if the guy doesn't want our chips, we can't do a deal with him. We can only do the deal with people who will take the alternate currency. Well, how do you know chips aren't cash? That's because the point. guy that wants my cash says I don't want the chips. I'm buying your Where does cash come from? It comes from banks. People think yeah. it's a loan of savings. It's not. It's new money. Work with me, John. Yeah. Now, most people don't know this. When you go to a bank and you get a loan, you're not getting someone else's savings like a piggy bank. You're getting brand new chips like a casino bank. Now, they fooled you into believing it's a piggy bank by saying... Well, we know piggy banks can't lend out until they get a deposit. 
So we're going to make up a rule that says we can't lend out new chips until we get a deposit of old chips, and that way the suckers are going to think we're lending them the old chips once we got the deposit. And I know that they're not. They're creating new chips. The governor of the Bank of Canada in 1939 said, Graham Towers, the banks, of course, do not lend out their depositors' funds. Each and every time a bank makes a loan, brand new credit is created, brand new money. So, real chartered banks do not lend out depositors' savings like a piggy bank. They lend out new chips like a casino bank. Hey, John, John. I want to buy a house in Brantford. Okay. I go to the guy and I say, look, I want you to take chips from John's bank. And they say, we don't know those chips. We know the other kind of chips, the right. government issues. So no deal. Right? If he says to me, well, we're not going to do the deal with you no matter what or no matter how good your chips are, there's no deal. So if his premise is the guy isn't going to do your deal no matter how good your chips are, yeah, no deal. <laughs> what? Right. That's right. Yeah, that's, I'm no not selling you my house. If people have no money, they can't buy and do deals. You're right, absolutely. But I want if the money. guy insists on Canadian currency, there'll be no deal. But if the guy is willing to accept Toronto dollars or Calgary dollars well, why or some other, them? See, why we... well, you don't know about it because I never have a chance to tell you yet. Oh, well, thank goodness. Or, and try, okay, John, simple. Think really, really simple. Yeah, simple, like her. She just can't stay with the complicated poker chips. <laughs> Let, let's think simple. What does let's, let's, what let's mean? Local employment trading system. So people who sign up... Does that have anything up, to do with the bank? I'd like to just stay focused on the bank. That's what let's means. Yes. What does that have to do with the bank? It is a bank. It is a bank. Okay, so she gets it that let's is just a bank of poker chips, electronic poker chips. He doesn't yet. Okay. okay. It's an interest-free be... bank. When people sign up like poker chips, they give an IOU for a hundred hours labor, and they all start with a thousand in community currency, Vancouver dollars, Toronto dollars. Okay, so you're, it's a barter system trade. Yes. Where's the revenue model? What do you make money doing? Okay, well, so you're talking to money. the end of my presentation. As you should. Okay, we have here I USA Today, right communities print their own currency to keep cash flowing. We have, just quickly, ABC News, The Economist, John, The how do I John, John, Forbes. John, I asked a very simple question. I've been looking at this. Someone else approached me in Calgary. Ah, he's already looked at this before and he couldn't figure out how to make a profit from getting 10% on his money up front. You make money. All right, here's how you make money. Under the Berkshire system, which you could have read about in the USA Today, you might have seen it. Under the Berkshire system, which is just like Toronto dollars, Right. people go in there and they buy $95 worth of cash and they get $100 worth of buying power locally in the community. A little premium on your buying if you're willing to buy local. Walmart won't participate. Same with your Toronto dollars. You go into Toronto dollars, you John, give hundred bucks, they'll give you one ten. John, my question was simple. You're an engineer. I'm an engineer. How do you make money doing this? I just showed you how to make ten percent. Okay, I just showed him how to make ten percent, and he's still asking me how do you make money out of this. <laughs> Five. It was 95, right? Well, that's in Berkshire. It was 5 on so 95. I, make, I get the VIG. I get to keep 5%. Okay, he gets it. He gets the VIG. He gets the premium. That's what his gain is. He gets it, but he won't keep it. Myself. Yes. By, so, by buying local. But I have to convince everybody in that local area to yeah. take this currency. Well, they already how, do. How do they turn it back to cash? They can go back and cash out at the bank. Except they're only going to get 95%. Which is what they bought in for. That's fair. Isn't it? You buy in for $95 American, you get $100 in Berkshire shares to spend in Berkshire. And if you want to cash out, you bring 100 they give you 95 You break even. What? You want more? So the 5% is for me for providing this new currency. If you spend locally. Okay. But if you want to cash out, you get all your money back with no loss. And, and there's no problem for a run on the bank, right? No, because the cash sits in the bank and you benefit of the interest. Okay. So, you take the cash, you put it in the bank, and you take the interest for your system and you do stuff for your community. On the outside, they use the local currency in the stores, while the federal Canadian currency sits in the bank. This is what I call the Sparta effect. Coming up.
people never want to make money on their money. Well, that's not it. I'm just... They're making 10% on their money, lady. How can you come to the conclusion they don't want to make money on their money? See, but but that's your theory. Town, your theory. all their money in one... In, when you went to Sparta 3,500 years ago, same example. Arlene's not that old, first of all. Come right. on, that wasn't very nice. Anyway, anyway that, history, for those who know any... John, that's a, look, here's Let me give you an example. Listen, it answers John, your question. It does. Down. It answers your question. You know what I'm hoping? Have you ever heard of this idea of spontaneous combustion? I've never seen it. I'm hoping you're going to do it today. I really hassle you. Oh, okay. What a waste of time he is, isn't he? Going off onto spontaneous combustion. And then you get to the answer. No, but if you heart. burst into flames, that would be yeah. something. I'd when you showed up in Sparta 2,500 years ago, you no took your gold. <laughs> now, if I said 3,500 originally, and now I've just said 2,500, do you think I got it right the first time and I'm now making a mistake? Or do you think I got it wrong the first time, and I'm now correcting myself? Well, I got it wrong the first time. I'm now correcting myself to thirty to 2,500 years. <laughs> He's got to mention the 3,500 as if that's the right, and it's not. You don't yeah. have to go to the cashier buying for Sparta chips. John, the problem is everybody... That Sparta holds... made the interest. John, listen that's to me. Everybody, everybody that holds cash... John, sorry, I just caught this. He's now told us how to make money. Oh. Well, I don't have a clue, but he's just told us. Right? Oh, that isn't that witty. Isn't that witty? I've just told them how to make money. He doesn't have a clue, but I just told them. Well, actually, he forgot about the 10% that he didn't get earlier, didn't he? Totally not. Would you do that again in Sparta? Yeah. Everybody dropped off their gold at the cage, and they got clay chips to use in town. And when they left town, they cashed out. Sparta got the benefit of banking the money using the interest of finance community stuff. So, you get it? Sparta, 2,500 years ago, none of the merchants in town, like in a casino, for instance, stores, said, we're not taking any of your outside money. You got to go to the cashier. You got to buy Sparta chips if you want to buy stuff in Sparta. And when you leave, you cash out for your cash. This is hard to understand. Instead of using federal money that gets interest, let's all bank it in the city's name and use community well, currency. Why? I, I get interest to save the interest. John, John, I get interest on my cash now. I expect it. That's what I like. I well, like interest. want interest. That's exactly what so we want. want. That they want their usury. They want their loan shark profits. They want unearned income. Income they did no work to get. That's why the system doesn't work. Well, no, actually, that's why it's working all over the world, and Where? you aren't aware of it yet. That's all. I'm here to bring your attention to it. Thank goodness. goodness. You can yeah. go to Berkshire's and buy 10 grand worth of Berkshire's, and they give you 11. So Just you want to... In town. Let me, let me distill your idea. Tell me if I'm Please wrong. Let me see if you get it right. You, okay. You <laughs> want to create in a community, you pick one. Yes. A currency. Yes. You're going to go around to every merchant and convince them to take that instead of cash. Yes. Okay. You're going to do that on your own? I, 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 ones who, no, that's what I want the money for, to hire someone else to do it. I'm busy. <laughs> what are you busy doing? Do. What are you doing? Staying out I'm of jail? I'm a professional poker player at the Brantford Casino. If you Google for great Canadian gambler, I come up. I'm the world's best limit hold'em poker player. I have a book, play hold'em poker well, like a bookie. You must have a lot of money. Pardon? You must have a lot of money. Well, actually, I've spent it all as fast as I've earned so it. So you're because not a smart... After the bust, the government said I owed them half a million bucks from the million I made, so they're still trying to seize my accounts. That's why I'm the king of poppers. John, did you ever have to do any downtime? Pardon? Did you have to do any downtime? Downtime? Jail? Would they have the bars? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got pictures here if you want to see, but yeah, of course. But this idea, this idea you got is like blowing air up a dead horse's ass. It's not going to work. Pardon? I'm telling you right now. I say it won't work. So, he says barter can't work, even though it's working all over the planet. He's an expert. He knows about blowing air up a dead horse's ass. I'm blowing air up a dead horse's ass right now. It's gone. Barter won't work? It won't work. It's already working. It is working. Well, here's the point. Since because the crash, these, these people travel. The difference in Sparta, Sparta had one little group. They never traveled anywhere. So what are all these Why? systems around the world? Sparta. What happens? You're going, to have, yeah. you're going to have 50 pockets in your pants to carry all the chips from every city you got to go to. So he doesn't understand you can deposit your chips in an online account and spend that when you travel, like I did. 
Have you seen them? People in jail? Ithaca hours. They did, didn't they? 3,500 years ago? Tips from Ithaca can be spent in Toronto, and Toronto dollars can be spent in Calgary. They don't have to be spent locally. John, how do you do? you got a local economy. I'm going to have to go out because I'm afraid it's time for you to get back to the institution. All right, now the gloves come off. Now he got in, what, insulting? And now it's my turn. Yes. Yeah, before they come looking. All right, three shots before they come looking for you. All right, no problem. My no, turn. No, no, and you right. say you're an engineer. <laughs> Anytime you want. <laughs> Did you see him look down? He just got kicked right in the nuts. Got his scientific credentials castrated. Ooh, you could see him. Let's watch that again. Local economy. Are John, you gonna get to I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to go out because I'm afraid it's time for you to get back to the institution. Yeah. yeah. yeah before they come looking. Um, right now, the inmates are right. You say you're an engineer. <laughs> Anytime you want. <laughs> Eyes went down, that's for sure. <laughs> Anytime you want to put your money where your mouth is, I got 500 bucks right here in the chip says that I'm right, you're wrong. Now, this is where I get tough. When I start flashing the cash and going bye bye trash. Once a guy says I'm wrong officially, now I pull out the bet, make him back down in public. Time to make these billionaires back down from a $500 bet. You got some cash to put guy. up. Very different. <laughs> you got some cash to put up to billionaires. <laughs> Being a rich guy and lose the people does. It takes me John, to really? People in the ambulance are yes, you didn't hear that clearly, but I said the only difference between a rich guy and a poor guy is that a rich guy takes me longer to break him. No, I'm the great king and gambler. You're wrong. I'm right. Will I'll you bet. burst into you? flames? Will you, you want to put up 500 flames? bucks? Put your money where your mouth is? And of course, Mr. O'Leary won't put his money where his mouth is. Come on, dragons. You have a talk about engineering winning coming. your face and the king of the dragons here. Come on, dragons. <laughs> Oh, I love it. King of the poppers. I got yes, no and cash John. and I'm shaking up my world. Don't, and you be, guys don't, don't be a weenie. You, you want to bet 500 world. bucks, sir? You want to put your money where your mouth is? I love that line, making Mr. $5 billion back down from a $500 bet. You haven't shown me how to make any money. Because you can't see. What, he didn't understand the 10% vigorous? Forgot it already? You can buy in and get 10%, 5% now in Berkshire. You are one of the brightest people you've ever met. What would you need us for? <laughs> Actually, most people with money aren't bright. They got money, they don't need to be bright. <laughs> Isn't that true? Talking to five rich guys who don't need to be bright because their money grows by itself. Do they? I got 500 bucks here, says I'm right, you're wrong, and you can't bet. Yeah. Isn't that a wonderful line? I got 500 bucks, says I'm right, you're wrong, you can't bet. I, I no matter how money. much bankable you got, you got to back down to Johnny Engineer you and the camera got, turn out. Ah, no matter how much bankroll you got, you got to back down to Johnny Engineer. Hey, you've got a gambling <laughs> You've got a gambling problem. I'm a winner, lady. I you've got a gambling problem. problem. It's worked for you me. You have a problem, and I don't, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Because I want to bet that you can't? I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm hey, if you want to dismiss me, I just want to make sure everybody knows that you couldn't put your money where your mouth was. I don't want to bet you. And the king of the dragons made you all back down. Isn't that a wonderful line, making them back down on national TV? Gee, no wonder they cut it from the show. <laughs> was smart enough to take the good gamble. Is that right? Wait a minute, you're betting against us. Why would that be smart? You just told me you were smarter than me. You're betting against me. Now you're making fun of me for not taking the bet. I'm out. You're done. Goodbye. I'll give you a hunt. Now, I was pretty incoherent. I was trying to stay with him, and when I realized that he was just mumbling incoherently, I could just snicker and go to the next guy, Mr. Burning Bush. Your end, you burst yeah, he's still on the burning bush fetish. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I think yeah. you're capable of it. I've never seen spontaneous combustion, but I believe you could do it. Well, well, I've heard right. of it all around the world. Hey, I'm the most unelected politician in the planet, and if you guys were voting for me, I would have stayed that way. Think so, hard. Think hard. You, you have your opinion of me, and I have my opinion of you, and the viewers know who's the winner. Right? The viewers know who's the winner. The guy who... Well...
All right, so you're, you're not going to burn. And said, bye-bye trash. But, okay, the guy who flashed the cash and said, bye-bye trash. You're not going to burst into flames, so I can't give you 100000 a month. John, do you take the medication orally or with a needle? What a, what a juvenile, you know, anal retentive person, eh? Didn't even bother. Could be rectal. I think it should oh, be. Oh, yeah, could be rectal, I see. Should be. It should be. Well, that's a sharp. Actually, that, that's a sharp comment. And the guy who made him drop 4,000 marijuana charges, so I'm a herbalist. Are, I'm a are, are you thinking about it? Oh, I was all over the You at the dead horse's ass. Anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the king of, the king of the dragons made the dragons back down, and you're going to cancel my show. Yeah. See you later, boys. Good night. Good night. All right. Sorry, All right. I had to take a whole afternoon off. Okay. I feel so stupid. Flash the cash. Bye-bye trash. <laughs> Watch the garbage can <laughs> on the way out. I love the garbage. <laughs> He's that's the like, joke. Like, He's the that's joker. That's like a wicked lot. <laughs> Well, when you know you just slapped them all around the studio with a $500 chip, of course it's a wicked laugh. Kevin, yeah, next time your brother comes on the show, you got to give us more notice. <laughs> oh, yeah, because the family... I believe his whole story. All yes. Oh, well, there's three, well, did there's, you understand there's, there's his story? Article. Yeah, I got the story. What was oh. the horse's uh, butt joke? He's blowing air up a door the dead horse's ass. And he ought to know. What are you doing? It's kind of pointless is what you're saying. Yeah, it's pointless. You can blow all day. Why would I blow air into that horse's ass? Well, because there's nothing there to do. Until they both got it goes pop, 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 poof. I just think... So now we know what happens if you spend your time blowing air up a dead horse's ass. And Mr. Boston Pizza is an expert. I think that he could have burst into flames. So I like that. Oh, and Mr. Burning Bush still. Exactly, I've heard of it. Yeah. When did he get out of the Crowbar Hotel? I couldn't get him going. When did he get out of the Crowbar Hotel? Do you think the problem was his valuation? Should we get him to come I back? I think so, maybe. I just thought if he could have given us... You've got a lot of points for that. Ten points, that was the issue. Was part of 20? All right, they get it. Ten points, that was the issue. Maybe if I'd given him 20 points. 500 years ago or 3,500? I was confused, sorry. Well, again, he doesn't know. And he went and opened his mouth and proved he didn't know when he could just kept his mouth shut and nobody would have known he didn't know. Brett, Not you're an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, you're an engineer. <laughs> so he got the insult of my laugh. And now for my three-minute um, post-game interview, we'll call it. I warned them the King of the Dragons would burn them if they didn't know their stuff. And if they aren't, they didn't Google for anti-poverty system, they would have found my right software. They Google for financial lifeboat, they would have found my left software. And I was warned that they were uninformed of who I was or what I was explaining. And like Jesus said, when it comes to explaining interest-free banking, they will forever be hearing without hearing and seeing without seeing. And the more interest they have at stake, the less likely they're going to understand the heaven of an interest-free world. But all I want to do is let you log on to the Bank of Canada like PayPal, open an account, cut checks to settle all your mortgages, and after that all payments go against principal, and you can pay in cash or in time, be it on a government contract. So nobody can stiff the system if you have to work it off, and that's all I want. Time-based currency. But you can make money by going down to the Toronto dollar system, investing a thousand, they'll give you eleven hundred to spend in Toronto. Fast ten percent on your money up front, and it helps your local community. Same in Calgary. Calgary Transit takes Calgary dollars. If you can't spend it with one of the Calgary dollar merchants, you can spend it on Calgary Transit. So there are lenses at a hundred different communities in Canada at my website. Just Google for Johnny Engineer, you can find me. It's in 58 countries, and when I went to Europe, I was about to mention that, 10 years ago, I paid for 39 nights out of 40 with an IOU for a night back in Canada, worth five hours. So, we use international trade in time, we use hours to do it. They have the Ithaca hour system in New York where they use one hour bills worth 10 American, and in Canada, a one hour bill is 12, 
and in France it's 60 green marks, and in France and in Britain it's 6 green pounds, and in Germany 20 green marks, but between countries, 5 hours per night for accommodations. And so that's all it would take to set up a worldwide, and we could call it Dragon Dollars, yeah. but it's not going to be. Really. Sorry, really so the Dragon right. Rollers won't be the name of the currency that saves our country. Thanks. <laughs> So, they won't be dragon dollars that are going to be the currency that could have saved our country. Imagine that. If these billionaires had caught on and had financed the community currency movement, poverty would probably be eliminated by now, a year later, a year and a half later. So, they had a chance. They blew it. And, of course, we're going to go see now the CBC One Minute Recap to see the hatchet job they did. Then there was John Turnell, who came for $100,000 for his ambitious plan to completely overhaul the Canadian banking system. Okay, well, remember now, CBC argued to the judges that this was a fair rendition of what I had said. A fair interpretation. Basically, what they showed was what I'd said, is what they told the judge. So now you judge. This is government chips that don't inflate, and these are government chips that do inflate. Well, what's going on? Since the hardware is identical, must be a software problem. They had to cut. John's complicated plan involves replacing our currency with poker chips to fight inflation. Inflation, if you got 100 chips chasing 10 watches, economics teaches inflation is an increase in the money chasing the watches. But he... So, and they don't say, I'm the discoverer of shift B inflation, a decrease in the watches. They cut that and overdub it with the moderator introducing Arlene's doubts. Lost Arlene during the economics tutorial. John! Okay, so they could have had, I'm the discoverer of shift B inflation, a decrease in the watches, which really shocked Arlene, but instead they cut it out and they made Arlene look shocked at my saying inflation is an increase in the money, which is what she was taught in economics, making her look pretty stupid, right? I gotta stop you. What the hell are you talking about? And unfortunately, he already lost Jim at hello. This idea you got is like blowing air up a dead horse's ass. Now remember, nobody on TV in this minute has even heard what the idea of the 10% premium is. It's not going to work. I'll give you a hundred grand if you burst into flames. I am. Uh, Mr. Burning I'm Bush. Out. <laughs> I'm out. You're done. Goodbye. So that's it. And I sued, and I'm now in the Ontario Court of Appeal on, a, on an appeal for a motion for a breach of contract because they were supposed to show the actual pitch I made for the 10% on the Branford books. And instead, they take two comments, two half comments, and then have me thrown out. And now they tell a judge that this was a fair representation of what really happened. And both judges, Lofchick and Arrow, both agreed. So, I'm suing for breach of contract for not showing that part. And I'm suing for defamation because of the cuts they made to try and make me look stupid. Hey, if they put half of what I said and not the conclusions, who's going to understand anything I said? So I sued them for defamation as well, and I was dismissed, and both of these are now at the Ontario Court of Appeal. And that hearing is going to be coming up on July the 12th, my appeal of both Dragon's Dens, next month. Think about that, how fast that's moving. So that's the Dragon Den story, and I hope that you appreciate the sleazy job they did. Oh, and here's why they got away with it. They send everybody an information kit which you read and you get ready what you should do. Then when you show up for the actual taping, then they spring a five-page, 35-paragraph consent form on you to sign. 
and they go, oh, you can always skip your show today and go study it some more and come back next time, whoever does that. So they coerce people to sign their consent form, and in the consent form it says, I gave them the right to defame me. Well, there are some courts in the states that say that because defamation is a quasi-tort, these consents in advance shouldn't count. And I'm still arguing that it shouldn't count in Canada. But basically, they sleazed me by giving me this consent form at the last minute instead of sending it with the rest of the information pack. And they do it to everybody. So, I'm arguing that if it's an unconscionable term in the contract, doesn't matter whether or not I signed it or not, it's unconscionable. So in this case, because I had no time to read it, no one has any time to read it, I'm saying it's uninformed consent, which is different from informed consent, had they sent me the consent form with the original info package. But both judges said, you signed the consent form, therefore they got a right to defame you. And they took this and they put it on their website so anybody could go watch the one minute smear job of me. And the judges said the consent lets them keep doing that forever. Well, that's why I'm putting up the truth, so you can watch this video of what really went on, as well as how they corrupted it and misinterpreted it and smeared me. And I'll bring you up to date after July what happened in the Ontario Court of Appeal, whether or not the fact that they sprung the consent on me and I signed it lets them get away with smearing me forever. The only great thing about suing them, even though it's cost me 15000 in court costs that I owe them so far, is that I got a copy of the videotape of the whole thing. I'd have never gotten any other way that I could now show you and put online so people can go see the truth if they ever watch the one-minute hatchet job on TV.